Donald Trump is very much a showman. Donald Trump knows the value of sort of keeping everybody in line and keeping them a little bit strung along so that, well, they go out there and they stump for him and they say nice things about him. And he then, therefore, can hopefully expand his base, right? So if you were a Ron DeSantis person and you thought, I just want Ron, and then you were angry that Ron was out of the race, well, if, if he strings Ron, Don, strings Ron, on a little bit, well, maybe he'll bring in some more people. And that's kind of what you're seeing right now. I want to share with you what he had to say on this very issue. Tim Scott, great example. Take a peek. Him nationally by a lot. In fact, right now we're winning the popular vote by a lot. Um, when Biden ran, he pledged he was going to pick a female vice president in 2020. What qualities are you looking for in your vice presidential pick? Well, always the first quality has to be somebody that you think will be a good president, because if something should happen, you have to have somebody that's going to be a great president. A lot of people are talking about that gentleman right over there. And he's been he's been so great. He's been such a great advocate. I, I have to say, I don't this is in a very positive way. Tim Scott, he has been much better for me than he was for himself. I watched his campaign <laughs> and he doesn't like talking about himself. But boy, does he talk about Trump? And I said, you know, I called him. I said, Tim, you're better for me than you were for yourself. But he's fantastic and he's a fantastic person. Uh, so no, someone, I who want can somebody step in. That can someone who can step into the role. Most importantly, you have to view that. The audience has uh, been asked who they think would be a good choice. And various names came up. Um, uh, one of them was, of course, Vivek Ramaswamy. No. He's made a big splash. Ron DeSantis, who's made in, making an appearance today in South Carolina, we just found out. Um, obviously, Tim Scott, Byron Donalds. And a, a big uh, presence here for Tulsi Gabbard. Um, very interesting. Um, are, and Christy Nome as well, I should say. Right. Are, are, are they all on your short list? Yeah, and when can, you, when can we expect that you will so announce your choice? The one thing that always surprises me is that the VP choice has absolutely no impact. It's whoever the president is. It just seems uh, I remember when Sarah Palin was actually picked and she did have a big up. And then uh, they just went after her at a level that nobody seen. The Republicans themselves went after what they did. But you'll be a one term president because you've already served. Yeah. So you can only serve for one term, although they say you'll never leave office. I assume uh, yeah, that you'll do. never leave. There'll never be an ele another they say, election. Don't again. do it. He'll never leave. He's yeah. never going. Oh, these people. They um, are so for that reason, it is important. So who, you're, who you so pick. I think it's very important. But look. First is that, as we said, it has to you know, do with whoever is, you know, it's a very important position for that reason. Uh, you would like to get somebody that could help you from the voter standpoint. And honestly, all of those people are good. They're all good. They're all solid. And I always say I want people with common sense because there's so many things happening in this country that don't make sense. Who wants an open border? Who wants high interest rates? Who wants all electric vehicles? And they're fine, but you want to have choice. You want to go to combustion. You want to go to uh, the, any hybrid. I think the hybrid are much better from that standpoint. But you talk, we were talking about faucets. We're talking about, we should, we're talking about so much. It's all based on common sense. We want a strong military. We want choice in education. We want to have things that can really make our country great again. What we're doing with the open border is a disaster. We are destroying our country. We're going to change that fast and we're going to get your energy price. Wow. I mean, yeah, just a little bit of common sense, would you, right? A little bit of common sense, I'll tell you, will go a very, very long way. It, it's, it's amazing how so many people on the left have gotten so far away from that effectively common sense. It's like, we're not reinventing the wheel here. I mean, we're just talking normal. Like, hey, Mexico has a border, right? Every country has a border. This is not unusual to talk about. And yet suddenly it turns into who knows what when you dare to say, hey, maybe we need a border. Anyway, so Donald Trump making it very clear that he cares about policy. He also kind of made it clear, like, you guys are kind of overthinking this on the VP things because it's not going to make or break the ticket. Now, I get it. And I that may be in part his way of sort of calming expectations, like, hey, I'm the show. Look, he is the show, right? There is no doubt about that, which kind of leads me to, okay, the bigger personalities out there, like a Tucker Carlson, 
who's doing just fine on his own. Thank you very much. I don't think Tucker needs this gig or wants this gig, frankly. He's, he's said that over and over again. Um, but other big personalities like this gentleman right here, I know you guys love him. Here is Vivek Ramaswamy when he was willing to get himself out of Colorado, willing to get out of Colorado. Why? Because, well, they did some really funny stuff with their ballot to the point where I had to go to the Supreme Court, and I think we're going to see a unanimous ruling on that one. In the meantime, Vivek. This is a hollowed out husk of what the country was built on. The basic principle that we the people select our leadership, not the unelected elite class in the back of palace halls. That's old world Europe, not the United States. That's why I'm making a pledge today that I will withdraw, I pledge to withdraw from the Colorado GOP primary ballot unless and until Tr Trump's name is restored. And I demand that Ron DeSantis and Chris Christie and Nikki Haley do the same thing or else these Republicans are simply So complicit. it was a little bit of a self-serving moment, right, for Vivek, because in doing that, he kind of put the pressure on the other ones, and, well, he was going to get out of Colorado anyway, let's be clear. But he's sort of this up-and-coming rising star within the Republican Party, and so a lot of people are like, oh, it's got to be Vivek, it's got to be Vivek. And I'm like, wait a second, did you not hear what the guy just said? He said, look, we don't need a superstar. They tried that before. They brought in Sarah Palin. Look how that one worked out. So his point is, I am the star, okay? He doesn't need Tucker. He doesn't need Vivek. He needs somebody who can get the job done. He needs somebody with some common sense. So that leaves us where? You know, we've been up and down the whole idea about a woman before. I'm surprised Laura didn't bring up Sarah Huckabee Sanders because I think that she is actually a pretty valid contender in there. But what my intel is telling me and sort of what I'm hearing in some backroom conversations. And look, I, I called it for Mike Pence back in 2016. I said, he's going to pick Pence. And I knew exactly why he picked Pence. And I really think he's going to go not with a woman. Like everybody thinks it almost feels too cliche, right? Because Biden's like, I'm going to go with a woman. And sure enough, we got Kamala Harris. Oh, that worked out well for him and for us. Um, I don't think he wants to be pigeonholed into that. A lot of people thought, including myself, by the way, that it would be helpful, helpful to Donald Trump and his candidacy to go with a woman because let's face it, women don't really like him the way the men like him. But if you try to kind of over script that one, if you're like, okay, I want a woman just because she's a woman, one, men resent it. And two, women, let's be honest, um, don't always love other women. So you're going to have that whole battle to contend with. So what if you just doubled down and said, you know what, I'm going to go with men. I'm going to go with men and maybe I need to actually try and see if I can expand my base by cutting into Joe's. And what is Joe trying to rely on? Minority men. Well, what's amazing is that Joe is down 20 points with minorities. So that base, that Obama base that they think is going to come out and rally for Biden, I don't think it's there. And I think this is the path of opportunity. So you know who I'm going to tell you to watch? Dun, dun, dun. Byron. Byron Donald's out of Florida. Naples congressman. And he's smart. He understands the economy. You heard what Trump said on, you know, we don't want high interest rates. We don't want this, that, and the other. We certainly don't want inflation. Byron might actually have a shot here. He can walk the walk. He can talk the talk. He's a kid who grew up in really hard circumstances in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, and he kind of made it good. And he, he has kind of a, an interesting and I think challenged past, which actually plays as a strength to him as he goes out and talks to a lot of people in minority communities because he had to overcome a lot. He had a single mother who worked her tail off and she was so, so committed. He's told me this. He's come on the show. You guys should watch the whole interview. It's really terrific. But she was so committed to him being successful. And he loves his mom, right, as a result. So what better way to reel in the women than with a guy who's not going to overpower Donald Trump who loves his mom, adores his mom, Women will like that. 